I never even would have thought how much plastic we're surrounded by that we can't see. And now anytime I'm like walking anywhere, I just think what kind of plastic is floating around in the air or when I'm swimming in the water, like all the pollution that's around us that we can't even see, but it's still affecting us. It just amazes me in a not good way. I, I found uh, this project out in Montana where they use citizen scientists to sample an entire watershed looking for microplastics. Uh, in northern Michigan, we're really focused on uh, clean water, clean air. Entire community is focused on the out of doors. We have the Boardman Ottaway watershed that runs between Traverse City and Kalkaska. And I thought, what a great way to get students involved, but to sample this river that goes right through the heart of our community. I think it's a very neat project and I'm excited to be a part of it. I think it's good for studies. I like how we're actually getting out of the classroom and we're going out into the real world and learning more. I, it definitely is going to be something that I remember for the rest of my life, which I mean, I don't remember much of my biology class in high school. It's just because we didn't really go outside of the classroom. We were just doing book work all the time. I think it's important for students to be out of the classroom, hands-on. It helps a lot to learn that way, I think. I really enjoy the field work a lot. Going through the samples was a, a ton of fun. You know, you find something and you're not really exactly sure what it is, so you, you, know, you zoom in on it, and you move it around and try to get the light just right to see if, you know, what, what it looks like under the microscope. So I found that to be a lot of fun. I think like, Oh, you need a big laboratory or like a lot of people to do these studies, but really you, you don't. You just need the right methods and, you know, some minor tools and some guidance and you can get the, you know, pretty cool scientific research done. We're going to go with 0.2 meters per second and 7.5 degrees Celsius. This is in our waterways, like this is what we're seeing in our waterways. And it's kind of terrifying a little bit, especially with how much we've seen in certain samples. I mean, like, that's a lot. It's a lot that's going on. Most of my science classes, like in high school, like you're not going out and you're not doing anything. And then in college, I've had a couple classes where we actually did go out and do stuff. We're actually like doing stuff with our environment, seeing what's actually happening here. We're actually seeing real life examples and it's here. You hear about things, you don't really realize how close to home they are until you know, you're know you looking at them and you see that it's just all around you. I was talking to my dad about it the other day and he started like looking around the house and going through things and throwing things out. Microplastics, I mean, they're everywhere, they're in everything. You know, you don't really realize it until you're just looking at it. It's right in front of you, it's everywhere. And another one. It is a lot of independence and you're counting on us, the students, to do a good job, making sure we get accurate samples and we go to the river and we're there to do our job and it's teaching me independence and also how just to be a better person and a better scientist. Tighten that back up and you can right that's upstream. Okay. Alright, here you go. I would say I'm a formal scientist, but I would like to think that I'm a scientist of sorts because I went out and I collected samples and I put the samples in statistical software and I calculated all the P values and all that stuff. It, you don't see that much trash in the river, especially if you go to the preserves or the parks, but the plastic is there. And because it's somewhere that you think there wouldn't be a lot of plastic, you go out in the middle of the woods, there's bears, there's rabbits, any animal, it's there. And it's super pristine and wild, but there's millions of microplastics right there and you wouldn't expect that. It was really crazy seeing that, how much there is in there. But it's really important and it's made me realize that we have to do a good job from the start because a lot depends on what we do. Making sure everything is completely sanitized so that there's no contamination and just like following the procedures to a T. It makes sense. Figured, you know, like there has to be some samples that don't have microplastics, right? And those were very few, like only like a couple, 2% of all samples that we took didn't have any microplastics. So I was like, wow, this is a lot more widespread than I realized. And then I started doing more research and it's like, oh, it's in the air too. I've had students who have left the program or left the class, come back and volunteer their time, come back and want to still be part of the research. So I was looking for research um, to help out my medical school application. Are we gonna go to Timbers? We're gonna try. Yeah. 
don't know if it's uh, been plowed, haven't looked. So I'm saying that all of the snow wants to be in that. I thought this one was definitely the most interesting. I mean, it's the air we breathe. I would love to know how many microplastics is in the air we breathe. I'm really glad we started out in like the environmental realm. I didn't really want to pursue research in medical school, but after seeing this, I think there's a huge gateway to microplastics in the human body. If we do want to like look at tissue samples, we can do that of lungs or something, or honestly any tissue in the body would probably have microplastics. It's given me a much more complex understanding of how much microplastics are actually in our water and are prevalent in our environment. Yeah, I didn't think that microplastics at that small of a level would be so prevalent in the water that we have, and it, it helped me gain respect for people in the lab and the work that they do there. Another big chunk. It puts into perspective like the unintentional harm that we can be causing just from our own, you know, day-to-day -day activities out there. I've been spreading awareness among my friends and family. I feel like a lot of us, we pollute the environment in ways we don't even think about, and I'd like to learn more about how to not do that. I've been really impressed with the way students have been asking questions. All of a sudden, students are like, hey, it's raining. Can we take rain samples? Hey, do you know there's worms on the sidewalk? Do you think there's plastic in worms? Uh, we're at 0.2 and 8 degrees Celsius. We're a small community college but all of a sudden we feel like we're, we're becoming a center for microplastics research in Northern Michigan. And it takes nothing other than introducing students to a problem and having them think about, oh my gosh, what about here? What about here? What about here? It's way more beneficial for students to see that process, to see uh, the instructor stumped. The instructor does not have all the answers. Just be a human in front of students. Don't be this walking encyclopedia. It's up to us to solve it and we can put an end to it. It's also up to the big companies to stop doing what they're doing. And I don't think that it's talked about enough. Everybody's saying, oh, it's just starting now. Like, but it's not, it's been, it's been happening and we need to do our best to change it and reverse it if we can. Labs or projects where true discovery is taking place, we have no idea what's going, what we're gonna find. Um, and I keep, I tell the students that all the time. I think that sparks their interest more. We don't know the answer. It may be a little bit intimidating. We've trained students to look for the right answer. In science, there is no right answer. And I think we've been doing a disservice to students. Here's the data, what does this mean? That's a better conversation. But foundational knowledge, devoid of any context, devoid of any problem solving, doesn't really help anybody understand the process of science. Students are just involved in their own education more. And isn't that what we want? To create better people, to learn how to do better things. Here they, they still have these due dates, but they're more involved in their own learning and their own research. They're a part of the solution and bringing stuff up with them. So I think that makes a big difference. It, whether they go on to actually be a scientist, you know, this idea of in, in a white lab coat, it doesn't matter. They're interested. They're, they're asking questions, they want to be involved. So I think creating that engagement, that is a huge benefit to a project like this. I am excited to keep learning. I think I'm in the beginning of my journey right now. I would like to be a scientist one day, but I'm still on the track.